Now, as many of you may know, I kind of despise talking about trendy things, things that are currently talked about by a lot of folks. But seeing as this is kind of important, and well, we've already established that we don't have very much time left. And December is going to be, well, spectacular, wow, and intriguing. And then so. I figured I might as well talk about this, seeing as we're at the end of November, going into the final month of the year. And perhaps the final month of the Empire, the Republic. Now, recently it's been all over the news. This is how I hear about these things. It's in the news. Folks are talking about it. It's trending. And then I think about it a little bit. Decide, should I make any commentary about it? Is it worth it? And a lot of times I say it's not worth it. But this is interesting. So I'm going to make commentary about it. Because it's interesting. Now, it's all over the news that the former president, the lunatic from mar largo had dinner recently with Ye. And apparently Ye brought along some of the lunatic from mar largos mutual friends and his new buddies, Nick Fluentes, and Milo Yiannopoulos. We're going to discuss everybody. Because there might have been more people, but these are who we know attended this dinner. We're going to have another kind of terminology for it, too, very shortly. Now, the lunatic says... His side of the story goes like this. Ye reached out to him to discuss some of his troubled businesses in light of his recent vehement anti-Semitism. And, you know, the lunatic said, oh, well, sounds like a great idea to have dinner with a vehement anti-Semite. Come on over. And the lunatic story continues. He says Ye brought over people he did not know. Now, this is where it gets really interesting. Because Nick Luentes is an adamant poster of content on Truth Social, the lunatic's failing social media platform. Now, you still don't know somebody that's posting all over your platform and it's not that many people on your platform to begin with I kind of find that hard to believe but nonetheless we'll go with believing the liar for a moment and then the lunatic sort of kind of to summarize this says that well they discuss some things, a little bit about politics, and he told Ye not to run for president. Now, we're going to unpack that in a moment. And then he said that there was nothing anti-Semitic or anti-Semitism. The dinner was quick and everybody got on their way. That's the lunatic story. Now, Ye did a debrief himself. He said, oh no, it was far more interesting than what the lunatic is saying. 
Jay said he went to Mar a Lago to ask the lunatic to be his vice president. And he said the lunatic started screaming at him at the table. We can believe this because there was ketchup on the walls of the White House. So we can believe that things probably got thrown around. That they were screaming. They might have even got into a physical fight. Who knows? You know, they're calling it a dinner. But I wonder did they have rulers and tape measures to measure their penis size. Because each of these clowns that attended thinks they have a big dick. And really, it's small dick energy that they're putting forth. Enough about their penis jokes. Anyway. Ye's side of the story continues. He says that the lunatic used vulgarity to describe his now ex-wife. And he got offended and said, don't talk about the mother of my children that way. Now, it's being rumored, and it's not confirmed, but a number of Adidas employees said that Ye shared an explicit video of his now ex-wife to them. So he's upset that the president is using vulgarity and misogyny to attack a woman when he himself does the same thing. This is me. Plenty of contradiction. Always. Now, Let's get to Nick Fuentes. He hasn't given any side of the story so far. He hasn't told what went on in Mar a Lago. Sharky. But prior to the dinner on the Lunatic social media platform, Nick Fuentes said that same weekend he was going to give the most, and I'm quoting now, the most racist most sexist, most anti-Semitic, most anti-LGBTQ+, and anti-immigrant speech ever in the history of the country. He said this on Truth Social prior to the dinner. Now, the lunatic, I know, is kind of up in age. And Candace Owens did recently say he doesn't know how to use the internet correctly. But does he not see that on his own platform? That his dinner guest, who's an avid poster on his failing platform, said that he was going to give the most racist, anti-Semitic, sexist, anti-immigrant speech ever in the history of the country? The same weekend he invites him to dinner? See... They kind of think that we're all stupid. I don't know, what game are they playing now? Ooh. Maybe they think that we're sleeping. Just because they're sleeping doesn't mean we're sleeping. I know, I say I let a lot of shit go, and I do. But this was interesting. Wait, there's more. Nick Luentes was also at the Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville. We remember what happened at this rally. Infamously, Alex Fields Jr. got behind his car, wheel, and drove at head speed into the Black Lives Matter protesters, murdering Heather Hayes. Now, we remember the lunatic right after that happened, said there were very fine people on both sides. Enter Nick Fuentes. Now, Nick Fuentes was not there saying anything kind or nice. I guarantee you that. There's plenty of audio and video. It wasn't kind or nice. And then... Milo Yiannopoulos 
Nobody's talking about this guy. But he's not actually a saint either. You know, Milo was deplatformed from all of social media for being an Islamophobe. I mean, Milo is someone who hates all Muslims. Now, I don't know how you can hate one cult and not hate all the cults. But Milo specifically hates every Muslim and has said some very awful things about the Muslims. And then he also hates the LGBTQ plus community. Apparently he was formerly homosexual, but through praying to Jesus, he's cured himself. And now he wants other gay people to be, I don't know, very much harmed. That's the word that comes to mind, harmed. Because he views them as being not human. This is a very troubled individual, Milo Yannapolis. Very far right. I would say a Nazi. So if you're at home taking notes, we've got Nick Fuentes, Nazi. Yay, Nazi. Milo, Nazi. Trump, oh, he's not a racist. He's not a bigot. He's not an anti-Semite. Wait a minute, you're hosting all of these Nazis for dinner? At your estate? And you're not one of them? Ooh, the media is reporting it as a dinner. It sounds like this is what it was to me. America's Hitler, according to J.B. Vance, the newly elected senator of Ohio. J.D. Vance called Trump America's Hitler once upon a time. So it sounds like America's Hitler met with his generals. Ooh, that's what generally happens. A leader meets with their generals. And it sounds like the meeting didn't go so well. Now I have my thoughts as to why this meeting didn't go so well. Remember going back to the ruler and measuring penis sizes. This is where the problem for the Republican Party really comes into play. Everybody on the internet is now saying, even conservatives are now saying the Republican Party is dead. Yeah, I've heard Josh Hawley say it, the senator from Missouri. And then yesterday I was watching a video of an individual I won't name. And he said the Republican Party is dead. And that MAGA, along with Trump supporters and DeSantis supporters, and centrists and libertarians have to unite to form a new party. And he said this new party should be called the New Republic Party. And I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute. What's new about it? MAGA, Make America First, is not new. It's been around forever. It's just got new bodies. But it's the same stale, worn out ideology of fascism. Nazism. That's what we saw at the dinner. Fascists and Nazis. Breaking bread together. I wasn't shocked or surprised by it. The media is acting as though this is surprising. I'm like, wait a minute. Nazis have to eat too. Fascists have to eat too. This isn't surprising. This is where it gets good, though. 
beginning, the artist formerly known as Kanye West is all but running for president himself in 2024. Now look, here's the thing. If one clown can be elected president who's a lunatic, not just a clown, but a lunatic, Ye is thinking to himself, why can't I be elected? I'm a clown and a lunatic too. But people were like, oh, but Ye is an anti-Semite. So is Donald Trump. Who are we fooling with? That's why he met with them. They're all in agreement. That's why they had them. Now, this is the good part. The screaming. Why the screaming? Why they telling Ye not to run for president? Well, because Trump is scared of Ye running. Ye doesn't have the same supporters as Trump, let's face it, but all of Trump's supporters are Ye supporters, and Trump knows that he'll be out clowned in the clown show. Now that does not mean that he will lose the nomination, it just means that he'll have someone clown over and on top of his clown. Oftentimes, narcissists don't like to be overshadowed by other narcissists. I'm just saying. So the screaming ensued because how dare ye want to do what's solely supposed to be his job? You see, the lunatic from Mar-a-Lago has convinced himself that he's the only person that should be king over the country. And somebody else coming along saying, no, I want to be king over the country. That could be problematic. And Ye has the advantage here, with conservatives especially. Look, the more you're seen as an anti-Semite, a racist, anti-immigrant, anti-LGBTQ+, the more you're seen as that, the more people are going to gravitate to you, give you money. Oh yes, especially in conservative circles. Yes, very profitable. And that's where this really gets interesting. Running for president of the United States of America is a very lucrative venture. Very, very lucrative. Imagine all the hundreds of millions of dollars that the lunatic raised. What do you think he does with that money? He didn't spend it on any of the Senate and House races this year. Oh, maybe he's paying his estate taxes with the lawyers. Just a thought. And then Ye sees this. He's like, wait a minute. Balenciaga, Adidas, and so many other companies, they just took $2 billion from me. I need to recoup some of my losses here. If I announce that I'm running for president, a lot of anti-Semites will send me money. A lot of racists will send me money. Ooh. They don't care how they make a dollar. Have you ever met these folks? They don't give a fuck. It's a dollar. It's all about the grift and the money. So Ye is figuring this out. He's like, if I run for president, 
I'm gonna slice into your campaign contributions, aren't I, lunatic? That's when the lunatic probably started screaming about his ex-wife and calling her derogatory name. You know, I don't think there was any women present. What problem are you on now for the Republican Party? Let's say this is problem number two. You got a room full of toxic men. Nothing but hate. That was what was on the menu. They were serving up hate. But it's clearly men in there. Do you think this is appealing to women at all in this country? Milo, Trump, Yay, and Fluentes. Is that really appealing? It's not even appealing to me. So, now you're seeing a lot of Republican senators, even the former vice president, say this dinner should not have happened. This is disgusting. You shouldn't give anti-Semites a seat at the table. This is not our party. One Republican senator said, this is not our party. I'm thinking to myself, yes it is. It was your party when you chose to nominate a lunatic. And now this is where the problem really, really gets thick and deep the Republican Party. They're going to have the lunatic from Mar-a-Lago run for president. They're going to have most likely Ye, the artist formerly known as Kanye West, run for president. Ron DeSantis is going to run for president and probably a litany of other clowns. If you thought the 2016 Republican Party debates were a clown show, wait for the 2024 ones. Oh my goodness. Ye and Trump suffocate DeSantis out of the room. They take all the air out of that balloon that is DeSantis. Now DeSantis looks like a centrist, which he's not. He's a fascist too. But when you get somebody that said they're going death con free on the Jewish people at your dinner table, and then you get Nick Fuentes who says he thinks women should be burned again, at the state, like in Selma, in, in Selma, the Salem, the witch crowds, he wants to burn women again. This is what Nick Fuentes has said. Oh, it's not just the anti-Semitism and the racism. We know he doesn't like the civil rights and the ending of slavery. We know he denies the Holocaust. But he also wants to burn women and gay people because he believes that their spirit has been controlled by Jezebel. And Milo doesn't like Muslims and wants to execute all of them in America, along with the gay people. This is who's at dinner. You're like, it can't be that crazy. No, it really can be. My oh my. And the Republican Party, the establishment, they're looking at this and they're saying, this is a nightmare. Look, think about it like this. I'm never going to vote for these
try to be nice. It's the holiday season. I'm never going to vote for these fascists. But they don't have to worry about me. They've got to worry about everybody else. You know, the problem with people like Milo and Nick and Trump and Ye is they've already got the people who are going to vote for them. And you say, who are they? Those are the men. Predominantly Anglo-Saxon white men. The Republican Party has that vote on lock. See, elections are about addition and not subtraction. So they've already got those people. And those, they number in the millions. But then there's folks like me, and we number in the millions too. And we're never going to vote for them. They're fascists. They're Nazis. They're scum. And we know it. We've known it for centuries. And so we're not going to vote for them in the millions, too. Now, there's one more category of people, the people in the middle. I'm not talking about running for president. I would never want to be president in this country. So I acknowledge that I'm to the far left. But the right doesn't seem to acknowledge that there's a far right. It seems like there's no end to the right. They think that Nick Fuentes is centrist. That Ye is a centrist. That Milo is a centrist. That Trump is a centrist. And so when you put up people who are fringe, the center is turned off by it. And they haven't figured this out yet. And therein lies the problem of why they keep losing. Look, 2022, if Barack Obama lost 69 seats, 63 House seats, and 9 Senate seats in his first midterm election, if the lunatic lost 40 House seats in his first midterm election, and inflation wasn't at a 40-year high. People didn't feel in, as down in the dumps as they do now. Shouldn't President Biden have lost about 120 seats? I think he ended up losing like 15 or 16 house seats. And they held the seat. That's incredible. And see, Republicans don't want to acknowledge that that happened. Because no matter how difficult the times are, people are not going to turn to Nazis and bring back out gas chambers again. Bring back out nooses again. See, that's what they really want to do again. Let's talk about it. They want to bring back slavery again. Americans, let's talk about it. Remember, Ye said slavery was a choice. And he also said he wants to go back to the governing principles of this nation, which is Judeo-Christianity. Now, this tracks well with the question I always ask. When was America ever great again? This is not a trick question. Because they said they wanted to make it great again. But when was it great to begin with? Ye says he wants to go back. And he says slavery was a choice. In his mind, slavery must have been a good choice. Because millions upon millions of Judeo-Christian Americans, as they called themselves, were slave holders. So they want to return to slavery. They want to go back to, well, internment camps, like Auschwitz and Bougainville. This is what they want to return to again, gas chambers. 
They don't have to say that. But nowadays, they actually do say it. It's clear as day. And then they get mad when folks like us call them fascist Nazis and scum and say, if you come near us, well, you will warn in advance. Look, I really think some folks have forgotten the rules. I get it. It's been a long time. And people, when it's been a long time, people, especially Americans, they want to challenge you again. They're like, I'm pretty sure we can take it. Well, you know, there's an ancient proverb. Everybody ascribes it to the Chinese because it was written in Mandarin. But nobody really knows who it was from. And it goes something like this. Those who play around with fire soon get burned. America, you're playing around with fire. I know we don't have very much more time anyway. But in that little time we have left together, you might get burned if you play around with the fire. I'm not saying you will. I'm saying you might. It's a possibility. You know, there's a mythological story of an eagle and an owl. The eagle and owl used to go at it. Oh yeah, we used to go at it. It's looking like the eagle wants to go at it again with the owl. Please be my guest. Folks say, we're ready. I'm ready too. I stay ready. I was ready before some of you were ever ready. The owls were in this republic before it was a republic. You eagles, you came here. We've been here. Never forget that. Sometimes people do. Anyway, if the eagle wants to challenge the owl in December, I want to say I humbly, as Katniss Everdeen did in the Hunger Games, I humbly volunteer as tribute to go first. Come play. You know where this is. It's not like you gotta go all the way to Beijing. Come take a trip to Seattle. It's lovely this time of year. It's a little cold, so bring a blanket. and have life insurance on hand. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Ooh, if it were up to me, if December were the last month, the last time we were together, well, let's have a holly jolly Christmas. Let's try to stay out of each other's ways. It doesn't have to be so bitter towards the end, does it now? Apparently so. Which is fine with me. Look, they're bitter, they say. We're bitter about what's happened. I'm bitter that it even happened to begin with. Who do you think is more bitter? If there's a judge, they're going to say both are bitter. And I 
think that would be accurate. Look, they're bitter because they have a co-worker who happens to be black nowadays. They're bitter because, well, they're not the only people at university. They're bitter because when they turn on their TV, they see a black woman. That's why they're bitter. I'm kind of bitter that you are still racist, homophobic, misogynistic. I'm bitter because you're greedy and you haven't done what you needed to do for centuries. So the one commonality we all have in common is we're all bitter. I don't know. Conservatives try to act as though this nation hasn't been run by them. Oh yeah, I have to go there. This nation has never been a communist country. I know they love to talk about communists, but I don't remember anybody being elected who was a communist as president. Not one. This nation has had all male presidents. Can you imagine somebody like Nick Fuentes being bad at women? And they haven't made a woman a president in 400 years in the Republic. How many female prime ministers has England had? And that's just as misogynistic, I might add. I hope they have another female prime minister soon. I keep telling Zara Sultana to run. She'd make a fine and great prime minister for women. We've had zero female presidents in this country. Yet Nick Fuentes and Ye and Trump and Milo are going to blame women for the destruction of the nation. See, there we go again with conservatives. My fundamental issue with conservatism, and believe you me, I know exactly what it's about. The word says it all. Conservatism. It's about conserving Anglo-Saxon supremacy and wealth. And I'm not down for that. But the part that I really dislike about conservatism is the blaming folks who are not responsible for anything in your country, for the problems in your country. They never blame themselves, and they're the ones in charge. Can you imagine that? I can have witnessed it. They blame the African American community for quite a bit. But they've had one black president. They gave Americans, regardless of race, gender, creed, sexual orientation, health care. He was such a bad president, he gave everybody health care. Make that make sense. He said 800,000 children who were brought here when they were little babies didn't know anything besides America. Went to elementary schools, grade schools, high schools. He said, okay, 800,000 of you. We're going to put you on a pathway to citizenship. These were smart kids, brilliant, 800,000, less than a million. And they said that he was trying to start an invasion in the country. Here's where the hypocrisy comes in. Ronald Reagan, their beloved President Reagan, who shut down all the mental health institutions. You know, they love to complain about people like Daryl Brooks. 
Why aren't they in an institution? Well, you can't ask Reagan. He's six feet under. But he closed them all down. That's why. Anyway, didn't Reagan give amnesty to 11 million undocumented people in the 1980s? 11 million undocumented people were granted amnesty. And the Republican Party didn't say anything about this. They weren't outraged. But yet, when former President Barack Obama said 800,000 little babies who were valedictorian students, they should be put on a pathway. They said he was a Marxist. Hypocrisy. Same thing with the money, too. The lunatic spent $4.1 trillion in his last year in office in 2020. Now, a lot of that money went to COVID relief measures. You know, like the Paycheck Protection Program, PPP. $4.1 trillion in one year. Now, this is the party that always tells you about runaway government spending and having to manage our fiscal spending. They let their president spend $4.1 trillion. Boy, do you know how much that could have bought? They could have did reparations for $4.1 trillion, which they still owe and they still need to do. But no, instead, the $4.1 trillion in the PPP, it mostly went to wealthy Fortune 500 companies. NBA teams got PPP money. There was nobody put in charge to manage all of this money. The businessmen, the individuals they always claimed they needed, somebody who knew how to run a business would run America the correct and sound financial way. And yet, you go on to the DOJ website, and you look at the name of all the people who stole money, charged with wire fraud, tax evasion, due to the Paycheck Protection Program. You just start scrolling from the top. And you can keep going and going and going and going and going. It never ended. I had to get off the website. I said, this is crazy. Hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people stole PPP money. I thought the businessman was supposed to be so good with finances. You know, that's something the Republican Party should do an investigation about now that they have subpoena power. Why was the Paycheck Protection Program so corrupt, filled with so much crime? That's a good investigation. I doubt that they'll do that, though. Because then it might circle back to their fearless leader. It's the hypocrisy and the blame of people who aren't responsible in this country for anything. They're like, we should go back to we the people. Is it really we the people? We're going to have to do a whole video on this. Is it really we the people? I'm unaware of that. You know, I swear, in America, Everyone who's white is an American. Everybody else who happens to be of color, you're just a guest here in the country. It's not we the people, it's we the white people. Get it right. They say they want to go back to we the people. 
When has it not been there? Seriously. They had an eight year pause. And then they gave us Trump. You know, I don't know what's so newsworthy about Nazis having dinner. I think it's tragic for the Republican Party, though. I think that's why they're speaking out. Because this is going to look really bad for them. I mean, their party is already dead. Activists are saying they need a new party, a new Republican Party, in fact. And then to have your choices be Trump versus Yay. You know they're sitting there going, this is preposterous. How do we get out of this? And you know, I hope they don't get out of this. You see, the Republican Party loves to talk about Lincoln. But that was so, so long ago. You notice they don't talk about anything in recent history? It's because if you think about in recent history, the Republican Party hasn't done anything for America. Nothing. Absolutely not. Civil rights was done by the Democrats in the 1960s. Medicare, Social Security was done by the Democrats in the 1930s. Health care was done by the Democrats in 2010 and 11. Now, what did the Republicans do? Well, they shut down all the mental health facilities. They've given tax cuts to the rich. So many times I've lost count. And income inequality has gone to such extreme widened gaps that they can't even measure it correctly anymore. So it seems like the Democrats have tried to offset the detrimental harm of giving rich people poor people's money. That's what the Republicans have done. The reverse Robin Hood. Steal from the poor and give it to the rich. You know, they said the oil companies, Exxon, BP, Shell, they made $100 billion this year in record profits. You know, when they say record profits, it means they stole from you at record rates. That's what it really means. Record profits means record theft. You want to know how they made $100 billion? During the summer, when racist lunatics wanted to get in their Ford F-150s and do a freedom convoy all around the country, Gas was at five, six, seven dollars a gallon. Do you know how much it takes to fill up a Ford F-150 at seven a gallon? Six dollars a gallon? Maybe like two hundred, three hundred dollars. Now imagine Ford F-150 after Ford F-150 after Ford F-150 buying your gas. Oh my goodness. They probably made fifty billion just over the summer off of those bozos, not wanting to sit at home with their wives, wanting to be out on the road, flying an American flag on the back of their Ford F one fifty. Look, don't hate the players. Hate the game. If somebody or a group of people are going to be bozos and you're a capitalist, you know how it works. You know how it goes.
Trump is running for president. That means he's going to raise money, right? He has a hundred million dollars already. But he's constantly sending out fundraising emails, right? If somebody is willing to continue to be stupid and give you money, are you going to stop them? It's capitalism. It's a grift. And now that the capitalists have destroyed their system, which was predicted, forecast, some say prophesized, now they're bitter and they're turning their frustration on people who had nothing to do with it. This is what generally happens to I just want folks to know. I really don't care about the dinner, nor the dinner attendees, nor the menu, nor the party that created the monsters in the first place. It couldn't have happened to a nicer political party than the Republican Party. They created the monster that is Trump. Trump had four years to create other monsters. And now those monsters might end up usurping him. This is what happens. But one thing is for certain. The Republican Party is going down. They're done. They're finished. It's a wrap. Can you imagine what Ye is going to say about Mitch McConnell, Susan Collins? Ooh, they think I was mad. What do you think Nick Fuentes thinks about Mitt Romney? Lisa Murkowski? Nancy Mates? You know, sometimes when you think you have a nemesis and you really don't, and a real nemesis pops up and you really have problems. That's why they say the devil you know is better than the devil you don't. But we don't have to worry about this too much longer now, do we? Because America is going first. It's America first. FYI, I never like going first. Second or third, maybe even fourth. But first, I know what they say about first place, the winner, all of that shit. But that's in a sports competition. You're talking about globally. America first. And what does that mean? It means America goes alone. We do our own thing. There's about 330 million Americans, right? There's 8 billion people on the planet. Right? If we don't have any interest in the overwhelming amount of the people on the planet, how is that going first? See, this is where that ideology becomes stupid. You really think a crazy person who's bombing one country won't bomb another, who's invading one country won't invade another. And then they'll just keep going, keep going, keep going. They'll do the Napoleon thing, the Genghis Khan thing. 
the Hitler thing. I mean, it's not like we haven't seen crazy lunatic men do this thing before. You know, the problem with people like Nick Fuentes, Donald Trump, Kanye West, and Milo Yiannopoulos, if you had to ask me to sum it up, the problem is they're a broken record. It's tired and it's old, and we've seen it all before. It's nothing new. It's just new faces and new bodies. On a stale and corrosive ideology. Look, I know Nick Fuentes and Ye and Milo are young. And one thing fascists have started to do in recent times is to try to make fascism seem cool and hip and trendy but it's like spraying perfume on horse shit it's like putting a ribbon and a bow tie on horse shit it's still horse shit at the end of the day You're not going to make genocide cool. And that's ultimately what those ideologies are about. Genocide of anyone who isn't like them. And that just so happens to be the vast majority of the planet. Look, again, those who play with fire often get burned. You know, I heard a story once, and this is true. A tribe, one of the tribes, I'm not going to name the tribe, because we all remember who were they. A tribe tried to sneak into another tribe's area and take their possessions. They went when they thought nobody would notice, which is not at night, actually. It's in the wee hours of the morning. And they attacked. And they found the area completely empty. This is how the story goes. The area was empty when they got there. All the tents, the huts, the food, everything was gone. Weapons, everything. People, nothing was there. So they were scratching their head. They said, wait a minute. Where did they go? And then they started walking back to their area. And when they got back, there was nothing left. All their food, their weapons. Everything was gone. Let me tell you something. You try to run up in somebody else's place. And somebody will run up in yours. There's two billion Chinese people on this planet. Two billion African people on this planet. Now you do some basic mathematics here. 330 million Americans. Two billion Chinese. Two billion Africans. I'll leave it at that because I think smart people understand and get the 